Hello and welcome back to ZetaCraft Season 4. This is now Episode 6. And with the Undead Crypt adventures now behind us, we can focus a little more on what we need to. And that is these guys. Yes, we have to do something with these guys. They are overpopulating our inn here and they are just taking over. And it's just not good. We, we, we have to do something about this. So I have found a location. Let me do a little F4 action here. There's a location right over here, which I think would be fantastic for a trading hall. Right in this space here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. And um, let's see if we can get a trading hall up and running. Just like with any good build, the first part is preparation. And we are done with that. The next part is... Uh, Resource gathering, yeah, none of us like it, but we need to do it. And what I am looking at here, all this redwood and I believe it's hickory that's behind it. No, hemlock, hemlock. I always get the two mixed up. Uh, so I have here a redwood sapling and a hemlock sapling. And let me tell you, redwood saplings, they don't come easily. So we're going to plant one right there. And these hemlock ones, I'm going to plant one over here. And why am I doing this? Well, because... I want to use what's around me to build this structure. So I am going to use a lot of redwood and I'm going to use a lot of the hemlock. But uh, I want to see how this stuff really grows. So I believe I believe it's like a uh, jungle tree. So if I plant four of them, then it'll grow the, the big, huge, you know, quad ones. If I do just a single, I think I can just get a single. So let's uh, let's give this a go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo. Ten bone meal. All right, look at that. See? Yep. So it's a single one. And I believe if I do four, just like in a jungle tree. So let's do that way over here. One, two, three, four. Let's bone meal this. Oh, yeah. See? Now we get one of the massive ones. Look at that. All right, so cool. So this will be our source of redwood because I do not want to lose any of the redwood in this forest because I want that forest as a good backdrop. Now we also have hemlock, so let's see how the hemlock grows. Yep, all right, just a single one. Lots of leaves on that guy. All right, so yeah, so it looks like we have, uh, yeah, looks like we have what we need. Uh, oh wait, I'm still wearing my armor. Why am I doing that? I have such lovely tailored clothes on, I might as well use them. So let's uh, switch that out. There we go, yeah. I know there's frost on the ground, <laughs> and I'm dressed like uh, I should be in Hawaii, but um, yeah, these shaders kind of go through different seasons, which is pretty cool. But I think the frost will go away at some point in time, so I'm not too worried. All right, so let's uh, switch out that iron. Let's not lose this. All right, so we are going to use a lot of redwood, a lot of hemlock. And I also want to use some dark oak, which I'm going to have to travel all the way to the northern side past the river. Because there is some dark oak right here where I can get it. All right, now that we got our dark oak, let's uh, head back and get most of our resources combined together and... Oh, check it out. A wolf. Oh, I don't... Uh, yeah, I do. I do have bones. Nice. All right, let's see if we can't get this wolf. Let's go. Come on, dude. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, we got him. Look at that. We got ourselves a pet wolf. All right. Very cool. So glad I came out to the dark oak forest. Aren't you, little buddy? Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, well, let's head back. Let's get you there nice and safe. And, uh, yeah, we can always come back here later. Come on, let's go. I think we could repurpose this uh, spot right here for your, your little dog house. So let's get you in here. I uh, got some fence. Yep. And I created this new item. I don't know what this thing is, but it is a dark oak highly gate. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Oh, nice. All right. So we got this highly gate. All right. Very good. I know. I know. You don't want to go into your little pen, but you have to to stay safe. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. There, there, there. All right, there you go. You're going to stay nice and safe in your little doghouse while I go build. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, so we've got all our wood together. We have spruce. We have dark oak. We have our redwood. We have our hemlock. We have our birch, our oak, and uh, some extra here that we probably won't use. And we have accumulated a whole bunch of saplings from both the hemlock and the redwood. So maybe a tree farm's in, uh, in our future. I'm not sure. Um, but you're probably wondering how I actually did this. I grow the tree, and then I have to go up the water stream, the top of the platform, and then I jump on the tree and chop it all the way down. And I do that for all three of these, and I've been doing it for quite a while. 
Oh, and let's not forget, I picked up some Bryce tree saplings and some jungle palm saplings, along with a saguaro cactus sapling. So I got these from the Wandering Trader, and uh, not sure what they look like, but we'll grow them at some point. But yeah, thanks for the uh, saplings, and uh, careful getting off the roof. Before we begin with the build, I thought I'd point out some of the new blocks that we're using because of the Zetacraft mod pack we have going on. Uh, so in this build, we're going to be using uh, redwood trap doors. Yes, these things are really cool looking, and I'm going to use a bunch of them. Then there's also the redwood door. So that is pretty cool. I like how you can kind of see through this little meshy area. And we also have these uh, roof blocks, which are part of the macabre mod pack. And we have here the oak, the, I believe it's dark oak plank, and this one, which is interesting, which is made from terracotta. So you take a piece of terracotta, use uh, the stone cutter here, and you can uh, make these. They're pretty cool. Uh, I like them a lot. And then over here, we have the base materials that we're going to be using, which is the hemlock wood, which I think is, is going to be my new favorite wood type. I think it's just amazing. Uh, we're going to use its uh, fence variant. We have the redwood, obviously, the redwood log and its variant of the fence. We have the stripped redwood and the stripped hemlock. And then this here is a cobblestone uh, brick, which is pretty cool. You just make it with cobblestones. You don't need actual stone. Uh, and then there's back here, which is really cool. We have now three new workstations. Uh, I believe this one over here is called the Tinkerer's Workstation. This one here is the glass blower. And this one here is the carpenter's workstation. And we needed those because we're incorporating some of these new blocks, which is really pretty cool. So we have this elongated lantern, which is just a regular lantern that you use the tinkerer's workstation for. And you can elongate it and make a nice long one, which is really cool. This is a woven spruce trap door. And this, again, is a just a regular trap door. And if you put it into... I think it's the carpenters so you take like a regular spruce trap door put it into the carpenters workbench and you can choose any of these other styles and just uh convert them so i did a whole bunch of woven ones and i just converted it and bam got a woven one so that is really cool i'm going to be using a bunch of those then we also have this uh ornate stained glass in this case it's it's an orange one because that's what i need for my uh thing and we look at here, we have the glass blower's workbench. And if you take just a piece of stained glass, whatever color you want, put it in there. And you get to choose from any of these ornate patterns. So I believe the one that I'm using is this one, ornate orange stained glass. Just click on it, bam, and you get one. So I'll be using a lot of those. That is really freaking cool. And then this here is actually a wall lantern. So it comes with the actual post, so you don't have to put a fence post down and then attach a lantern to it you can actually just uh, convert a fence post and a lantern into this uh, hanging lantern. So I'll be using all these new blocks with these new uh, workstations to make them. And I uh, hope you really like this build. Let's, uh, let's finally get it underway. Oh, there it is, and it's now time for the actual walkthrough. As you can see, there's a little bit of stuff that's changed. I added some trees over to the side here. I added some bushes here in the front. Um, I kind of did all that. Oh, and what's this? Oh, let me show you. Uh, I did this because I needed a villager breeder, so I quickly put this little thing together right here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go into F4 mode because I, I didn't give, my way, give myself a way in. But uh, I set them up a little garden here with a little farmer. I gave them a little tiny house. Inside this little tiny house, they got two little tiny beds. And a third one just over here. So whenever a uh, baby villager tries to get to it, he falls into the water system. Right here, falls through these trap doors. And he gets sucked in and moved all the way across here. Oh, look, there's one sitting there waiting. And uh, yeah, he's sitting there waiting on his little spot until he grows up. And when he grows up, there's another water stream that pulls him and brings him over to this side, which then allows me to shoot out a uh, minecart here, which picks him up and brings him inside the trading hall, 
All right, but let's not get distracted. Let's actually take a look at the inside of the trading hall. Uh, voila! Here we are. So this is it. Uh, I love the way these uh, stained glass came out. Uh, I just, I, I did this purposefully. I, I wanted like a nice window, picture window, to look back out at the forest because I love this redwood and hemlock forest. So there it is. That's a nice picture window they get to look at. And uh, yeah, I've got just about every villager in here. So off camera, I actually sat and waited for the villager breeder to breed up. And I got everyone in except one. Yes, there's one in a spot right there waiting for somebody. So uh, let me go ahead and let's push one in just so you guys can see how I did all of these. First, I had to actually break the stained glass. Oh, I know. It's painful, painful, painful. And then we come over here, and like I showed before, I'm going to push a button. It's going to spit out the minecart, pick up a dude, and take him all the way to where we need him to go. And that is in the very last spot. Yes, you get the very last spot, dude. There you go. So now he's in. And there was like this little weird fluke. Um, like I couldn't put anything down to block him in and then break this minecart because then he'd pop out. And then he'd pop out everywhere. And I couldn't stop him. So what I found out is they leave an empty spot here. This rail right here will stop him from moving. As well as uh, these here will stop him from jumping around. So now I can safely break this. He's got this block now to pop into, which he did. And then uh, all I got to do is slowly push him back. And uh, yeah, well, on camera he's not going to cooperate. But uh, what I do is I slowly push him back and then I wall him in with another slab here. So he pretty much looks like that. And uh, once that's done, then I can uh, get my whatever station I want to put, plop it right there, and start uh, figuring out his trades. Um, so yeah, I am going to do that offline because I have a whole bunch here that I need to start to train up and figure out what I want them to be a, a specialty in. And uh, yeah, and once it's all done, we are going to get ourselves all geared up. We're going to have all the greatest stuff. Yes, we are. We're going to have everything we possibly need, right? Because that's what trill trillers... That's what trader villagers do for you. They give you everything you could possibly need. So for right now, I am out of here.